الحمد لله الحمد لله العليم الخبير المتقن نظام العالم بلا معين ونصير فسبحان الله حكمته بالغة وعلمه غدير ونعمه واسلة إلى كل صغير وكبير ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا ومولانا محمد عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه ما دامت الكواكب تصير أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ومن يعش عن ذكر الرحمن نقيض له شيطانا فهو له قرين صدق الله العظيم All praises are for Allah Azza wa Jalla our creator, our nourisher, our sustainer. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his many boons and favors, for his blessings and his kindness, which he has given to each and every one of us. And especially this great month and this blessed and sacred and holy month of Ramadan, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to us, for indeed, my dear beloved brothers and sisters, it is from among Allah's great blessing to us and Allah's great gifts to us that He has given us the opportunity. He has given us the chance. He has given us the health and the strength to witness this great and blessed month which He, on account of His kindness, on account of His love, on account of his mercy and compassion, has given it to the believers. We as Muslims, as believers, must therefore recognize this great favor from Allah. For we all know, we all know very well that our lives are in the hands of Allah. Allah is the owner of our lives. Allah is the owner of our health and our strength. Allah is the owner of our wealth. Allah has created time and Allah is the owner of time. Time belongs to no man. We have no control over living another second. We have no control over our sickness or health. We have no control over the way we spend our time with respect to the time that Allah has given to us. Allah is the owner of all these things. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants time to whomsoever he wishes, whenever he wishes, and he takes time from whomsoever he wishes, whenever he wishes, and man has no interference with that. So when you and I find ourselves witnessing this great month and this blessed month, that came to the Ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam alone from among the thousands and hundreds of Ummah that came in the past. When you and I find ourselves in a position that we have found a month with health, with life, with strength, with energy, then we have to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that. Allah could have taken our lives. Allah could probably have given us our lives but taken away our health. He could have probably taken away our strength. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has granted us this opportunity and this time and this chance to see this blessed month. Some days and nights have gone already and it is our dua and we should continue to beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us the life the strength and the energy and the tawfiq, the divine aid and assistance to carry on throughout the month until the end. So when we recognize this, we have to thank Allah. And we have to spend the month in accordance to the pleasure of Allah. In accordance to the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has asked us to spend it. Because Ramadan is a very great blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In many ways, in many ways it is a blessing. And we see the blessings from Allah coming from each and every direction. 
And one, God, one of the great blessings and one of the great benefits of Ramadan to us is that Ramadan reminds us of our Creator. Ramadan reminds us of Allah. Ramadan reminds us that we are Muslim. Ramadan reminds us that we are supposed to pray and perform salah. Ramadan reminds us that the masajid that are built, that are the houses of Allah, it's not built there just to remain there and be called a masjid. But the masjid is built to be visited. And the masjid is built to be, to be frequented. And Ramadan reminds us that the Quran that we boast about and we talk about so highly that it is the greatest book on the face of the earth. Ramadan reminds us that we ought to recite it and every day. And we have to put our lives in accordance to the teachings of that holy Quran. And we find because of the fact that Ramadan reminds us of these things, we find that the masjid is more visited in Ramadan. The masjid is more frequented in Ramadan. The numbers of musallis increase. The people who recite the Quran increase in Ramadan. There is more attachment to the Quran in Ramadan. Although we were Muslims, although we had the Quran, but when Ramadan comes, the pages starts to flip and the book starts to become open. And we begin to remember Allah. So one of the great benefits and the great blessing that comes with Ramadan, the blessed month of Ramadan, is that it reminds us to remember Allah. It reminds us of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It reminds the slaves to recognize their master. Because many a times, we as slaves, we forget our creator. And we run away from our creator. And we forget our master. And we live our lives in accordance to our whims and our fancies. Allah has given us life. Allah has given us breath. Allah has given us everything that you and I have. We possess nothing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the owner of the dominions of the heavens and the earth. Allah has sent us on the face of the earth to live. He has placed our sustenance here. Granted us food, granted us drink, granted us every single thing that we want and we have asked for. And has commanded us to turn to him and worship him. But many a time that the slaves and the servants, they come on the face of the earth. They live their lives. They eat from Allah's sustenance. They drink from Allah's water. They live on account of the benefits that Allah gave to them. They do everything, but day and night, they are running their lives with total disobedience to Allah. They have run away from their master. They have gone far away. There is no salah in their lives. There is no worship in their lives. There is no calling the name of Allah in their lives. There is no prostration in their lives. There is no turning towards Allah in their lives. And the only time Allah is remembered is when they are in difficulties and when calamities befall them. And here is where the slaves are running away from Allah. We have no master except Allah and we are nothing but slaves to Allah. And Allah tells us in the Quran, with all that we have, with all that we possess, with all the wealth and the prosperity and the fame and the name and the land, Allah says, Antumul fuqara'u. You are all poor people. You human beings, you are all poor people. You are fakir. You are miskin. You have nothing. If you own everything, when you die, what goes with you in the grave? What goes you with you in the grave is what you have achieved, and that's your good deeds and your bad deeds. Where is the wealth, and where is the property, and where is the land? And where are those people who used to tag behind you and run behind you? Calling you by different names, you alone, you're going to go in the grave. Because we really don't own anything, everything. Lillahi, ma fi samawati wa ma fil ard. To Allah alone belong whatever is in the heavens and whatever is in the own. It belongs to no man. 
and the great and the mighty ones uh, from among the past who taught themselves to be the owner of the world like the Fir'aun and the Namrud. When they died, they died a humiliating death and they went back without anything. So therefore, we as slaves, we forget who our master is. And when he tells us, our master says to do this, we say we're not going to do it. He says, do that. We say, we don't have the time. He says, implement this. We say, that's too difficult. We, he says, do that. We say, we are living in Trinidad, in a Western world, not in the Middle East. We can't do that. That's for that time. The slaves are always rebelling. The slaves are always running away. The slaves are always violating. We forget, we forget, we forget. Look at the lives of Muslims. Some, some of them have lived their own lives and returned to Allah without one salah in their life, without one fasting in their life. They have not given a cent or penny or dime in zakat, yet they nourish themselves. They boasted about the wealth which Allah gave to them. They nourished and they grew themselves with Allah's sustenance and they forgot who gave it to them. Subhanallah. La hawla wa la quota. What a sad state. When this man comes in, for some reason or the other, we just try to become better Muslims. And we find the masjids, ah, Allahu Akbar, are filled. And we find ourselves wanting to give charity. And those people who are sometimes stingy to give a meal to their own family member, Allahu Akbar, they want to feed thousands of people. Because the love for charity is entering in the heart on account of Ramadan. We want to give to the masjid. We want to do things. Ramadan comes in and the love in our hearts increase for each other. Unity and harmony comes about. Subhanallah. Everything increases. Although we found no time to do anything, we are finding the time to do a little bit of good deeds at least. Because some sort of some sort of understanding has now touched our heart. Why? Because of Ramadan. We were not like that before Ramadan. How many times people used to beg us to go to the masjid? In Ramadan, we are going. Nobody begs us. We are there. Allahu Akbar. This is the barakah and the blessing and the power of Ramadan. This is the power of Ramadan. Allahu Akbar. So one of the greatest blessings and the greatest benefit of Ramadan to each and every one of us is that it reminds us of Allah. It reminds us of our Creator. It reminds us that we are Muslims and we have duties to perform. It reminds us that we are slaves of Allah. And whether we like eating or not, once Allah says to do it, we have to do it and we must do it. Ramadan brings about that, that understanding in us. And remembering, remembering Allah and being reminded, subhanAllah, through some way or some means that we ought to remember Allah and the act of remembrance of Allah itself, it is so great that it is something, it is so important that we need it in our lives, my dear respected brothers and my dear sisters. The remembrance of Allah, to remember Allah, is something that we need in our lives. Because without it, we are doomed in this world and the hereafter. What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say about people who live their lives and they do not remember Him? And about people who live their lives and they don't worship Him? And about people who live their lives with pride and with haughtiness and with arrogance. And they don't really care about worshipping Allah and turning to Allah and supplicating to Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran as a reminder. He gives us the profile of two separate people. Two categories of people. One category is of those people who live their lives in negligence, in neglect. They live their lives in a doki down manner. They're really not bothered about when they're going to die and if they're going to die and where they're going to go after that and what's there in the hereafter for them. They just live. They live today for today. 
They believe that everything that is good is good here and there is nothing afterwards. And there are those who do not behave in this manner. Allah gives us the profiles of two people. Two groups of people. First of all, he says, He says, وَمَنْ أَعْرَضَ عَنْ ذِكْرِي And whosoever lives his life in a way that they turn away from my remembrance. They do not worship me. They do not turn to me. They do not call on my name. They do not prostrate to me. They do not remember me and they do not connect with me. وَمَنْ أَعْرَضَ عَنْ ذِكْرِي فَإِنَّ لَهُ مَعِيشَةً ضَنْكَ For then for that person, there will be a difficult life on the face of the earth. For that person who behaves in this manner, there will be, there are two types of punishment that has been mentioned in this ayah. The first punishment is that which is in this world. Whoever lives his life in a way that there is no ibadah and worship in his life, and there is no Allah in his life, and there is no Islam in his life, and he is not bothered about his religious duties to Allah, Allah says he will have a difficult life. He will have a life of hell on the face of the earth. A difficult life is a life that is filled with so many different difficulties and hardships. And we Muslims at times, Allahu Akbar, we find ourselves as Muslims going through really tough times. The business is not going and it just can't go good. My family life just can't go good. So much quarrel, so many arguments. So much fighting. My children are drug addicts. No peace in my home. No tranquility in my home. No unity in my family. No harmony. Everybody has become a bitter enemy to the other one. Everything I try, it's not working. I marry and there is a divorce. And I marry, there is a divorce again. And it goes on and that, like that. I get a job, I lose my job. I get another one, I lose my job. No barakah and blessings in my wealth. Nothing. I'm always in trouble. And we try to figure out all these different things that are happening to us. The answer is very close to us, but we don't see the answer. We don't pick up on the answer. The reason is that many of us, we have disconnected ourselves to our Creator. We don't call on Allah anymore. We don't correctly worship our Creator anymore. We don't entrust our affairs to Allah anymore. We don't put our trust and reliance on Allah, but we put our trust on other things. So we get a difficult life. And we have a difficult life because we are turning away from Allah. We are turning away from remembering Allah. We are turning away from worshipping Allah. And this is why we will have that type of life. And it continues and continues and continues. And it will never stop, illa masha Allah, except by Allah's will. Allah says that is the case of that man. That's the punishment in this world for a person who turns away from Allah's remembrance. He says, وَنَحْشُرُهُ as for the punishment in the hereafter, وَنَحْشُرُهُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ أَعْمَى Such an individual, when we resurrect him, we will resurrect him blind, he will be blind. He will not be able to see. So this servant now, this man who stands up, and after he's resurrected and given back life, he stands up and he's blind. So what does he say to Allah? He says, Rabbi, oh my Lord, لِمَ حَشَرْتَنِي أَعْمَى وَقَدْ كُنْتُ بَصِيرَ Oh my Lord, why have you resurrected me blind and I could have seen in the world? Oh Allah, I had a sight. I could have seen. I would look at people, I could recognize things, I had sight, I had eyes, oh Allah, but now I am blind. Oh my Lord, why have you resurrected me blind? This is what will happen in the hereafter to him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say to him, He says, This is how it will be. This is your punishment, a part of your punishment. كَذَلِكَ أَتَتْكَ آيَاتُنَا فَنَسِيتَهَا Our signs came to you, our revelations came to you, our ayats came to you, but you forgot about it. You forgot about it 
وَكَذَلِكَ الْيَوْمَ تُنْسَى And so today you shall be forgotten also. Allah will forget you with His mercy and compassion. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about an individual who lives his life in a way and the individual will be reminded in the hereafter just as how Allah will call a person, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, hadith recorded by my Muslim, Allah will call an individual and say, oh my, oh my servant, I gave you life, I gave you health, I gave you strength, I gave you wealth, I gave you a good family. And I, he will enumerate and highlight all the different favors. Allah will say to him, oh my servant, what have you done for your own soul? And what have you sent ahead for your own soul? The hadith says the man will turn on his right. The man will turn to his left. He says, oh Allah, oh my Lord, I have brought nothing with me, oh Allah. Oh Allah, I have sent nothing, but I promise you, if you send me back only for one day, I will send up everything that I had on the face of the earth for this day. Allah will say, there is no going back. What you have sent already has arrived. What you have not sent have not arrived. And that is it for you. Allah will highlight his favors to each and every one of us. Each and every one of us, we roam around with Allah's favors. Our health. The ability to speak, the ability to look, the ability to hear. Subhanallah, the strength and energy in our bodies. When Allah begins to highlight all these favors one by one, and He says, but yet with all of that, my servant, you heard my verses recited, but you paid no attention. You heard the call, you didn't pay attention. You were wrapped up with your worldly life to such an extent that you forgot about me. You forgot why you were created you forgot that there, was a, that there is a hereafter. You forgot the life of the grave. Oh, my servant, you forgot that you will have to meet me. In another hadith, subhanallah, Allah will highlight the favors to a person and say, Oh, my servant, after highlighting all these favors, Allah will say, Did you ever think while you were engrossed with all those worldly benefits and bounties and you were really enjoying yourself and you had no time for me, to learn about my book, to learn about what I commanded you to do, to learn about my, what my Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa told you. When you were in that, did you ever think that one day you will meet me like you are meeting me today? The man will say, no Allah, I never thought that will happen. My enjoyment caused me to forget about you, Allahu Akbar. And that is what happens to many of us Muslims. Our enjoyment and deep engrossment makes us forget about Allah. And this is why Allah has made a severe punishment because forgetting about Allah means we are forgetting our Creator. How can we forget our Creator and be happy about that? Allah says in another ayah about those people who behave in this manner, that they live their lives in negligence. They have no concern about the matters of the hereafter. They have no concern about the state of their iman and their faith. They live just externally. They are not worried about what is going on internally with their heart. They don't even check their, their, their status in the sight of Allah. Allah says, وَمَنْ يَعْشُوا عَنْ ذِكْرِ الرَّحْمَنِ Whosoever lives his life away from the remembrance of Ar-Rahman, the compassionate one. Who lives his life and there is no Allah in his life. What do we mean by living a life and there is no Allah? It means that we are living our lives and it's only about our world. It's not about what Allah says. It's not about no time the individual is doing something and asking the question, but hey, I'm doing this. What did Allah say? Is it halal or haram? He has no time to think about Allah. And sometimes, na'uzu billah, may Allah forgive us. And this is, why we, this is when we become so deeply engrossed with matters that actually make us forgetful of Allah, that even if we are doing haram, and some good Muslim brother or sister or an alim says, brother, that's haram. We say, don't worry. And we go ahead doing it. Don't worry. And we are so bold. We are so bold at times to say, the punishment I will get, not you. لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله. Do we know what is punishment? The Prophet ﷺ said, the least, the minimum, the lightest punishment in the fire of hell will be 
where a man will be given a pair of shoes to wear, which is made out of fire. And when he puts on the pair of shoes, the heat will run through his body and begin to boil his brain. If we want to take Allah's punishment, let's see in this world how much we can take fire. Light a fire, put your hand in it, keep your hand there until it's completely burnt. See if we have any himmat and courage to take Allah's punishment in the hereafter. But what makes us so bold, this temporary world? Because this is what there, is, there are benefits in. How many ayats of the Quran have been mentioned about riba is haram, usury is haram. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says the lightest punishment for riba is, is a punishment that will be given to a person who had committed incest with his mother. The Quran has mentioned five different punishments for consuming and dealing with riba. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to the Prophet, announce to the believers that those who get themselves in that, Allah, Allah has announced a war, Allah has waged a war against such people. How can a man's life have barakah and blessings and goodness when Allah has declared war on him? When Allah himself has declared war on a person, how can that man's life be a life filled with barakah and blessings in this life and the life hereafter? Allah says that for those who live their lives against and away from the remembrance of Allah. There is no Allah in their life. When they are reminded about Allah, they just pass it by. It goes through one air and comes through the other air. When they hear about the, 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 the messages and the verses of the Quran about different things, they pay no attention. Allah says, okay, if they behave in this way, then you know what we do. We appoint a Satan for him, and this Satan is his companion on the face of the earth. This Satan is his dost. This Satan is his lifelong companion. This Satan is there to incite him with everything wrong. This Satan is there to put the waswas and the evil promptings. This Satan is to tell him, yeah, go ahead, do this. This is good. <clears throat> About the worship of Allah. The Satan is there to tell him, that's too difficult. You are not ready for that as yet. You are young. Have a ball of a time. When you become old, you will do this and do that. And the man never becomes old and he dies young when, when he's still young, enjoying everything, and he goes away from this world. And he was postponing everything for when he becomes older and he never becomes older. So nothing has been done for the good of his soul. Allah says, such people who live their life in negligence, violating the laws of Allah, turning against Allah's, Allah's way, having no time for Islam and for deen, Allah says, we put a Satan for him. And this is why, my dear respected brothers and sisters, we find that Muslims, and we find people generally, who don't worship Allah, who don't obey Allah, who don't do good deeds, they just feel, subhanAllah, they feel good in doing wrong things. And they increase in their wrongdoing. And they disobey Allah and there is no remorse in their heart. And these people have no time to turn to Allah in tawbah and repentance. Allah says, we put a shaitan for him, a Satan is his companion. That's for those people. As for those people who live good lives. They remember Allah. They turn to Allah. They don't forget Allah. Allah says about those people, as for those people who do good deeds, as for those people who do good deeds, male or female, and they are believers, then we will grant such people a blessed life. Allahu Akbar. Such a blessed life that the life will be filled with satisfaction and contentment. For this man who does good deeds, for this man to whom Allah gives hayatan tayyiba, a blessed life, a little is a lot for him. And for the man who has no good life, a lot is a little for him. No matter if he gets the whole world, he's never satisfied. He's never contented. He becomes greedy. He wants more. As for the man who is given the blessed life, he is going through the most difficult times. And you say, brother, how are you? Say, alhamdulillah, I am fine. He is sick on his deathbed. 
You ask him, how are you? He says, Alhamdulillah, I am fine. Poverty has struck him. He recognizes poverty is from Allah. You ask him, what are your needs? You say, MashaAllah, I am good. Allah will fulfill my needs. I have no need. He is always contented. He is always satisfied. He enjoys connecting with Allah. As for the man who does not have a good life, every single day he has a complaint, although he has much more than everybody else. The difference between hayat and tayyibah, a blessed life and a life that is not blessed. Allah says for those people, therefore, we will give them a blessed life, a life that is filled with goodness. Difficulties may come, but that servant will find such peace and tranquility and itminan in his heart. Nothing will bother him. Allahu Akbar. He is always happy with Allah's qadr. He does not question Allah's qadr. He loses everything. He says that belonged to Allah in the very first place. So why should I complain about it? That belonged to Allah. Allah loaned me something. He took it back. That is Allah's decision and authority to do so. That's the blessing here. Allah says, as for the blessing in the hereafter, وَلَنَجْزِيَنَّهُمْ أَجْرَهُمْ بِأَحْسَنِ مَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ And in the hereafter, we will reward him. We will reward him abundantly with such blessings that is far better than that which he used to do on the face of the earth. This is of that person who lives his life remembering Allah. So my dear respected, my dear beloved brothers and sisters, Ramadan has entered. As I mentioned in the beginning, really and truly, something which we witness with our eyes and we witness every day is that Ramadan brings us closer to Allah. Ramadan makes us mindful of Allah. Ramadan makes us remember Allah more often. It reminds us that, listen, we are Muslims and there are things we have to do. But let that always remain with us. Because if, na'uzubillah, we live lives not with Allah's remembrance, then we will be doomed here and in the hereafter. But if we live our lives remembering Allah, calling on Allah, worshiping Allah, connecting with Allah, recognizing we are slaves and we have a master and the master always turns to his slave. If we live our lives in that way, inshallah, as we will remember Allah here, Allah will remember us in the grave when there will be no one and nothing except that, that one. And Allah will remember us on the day of judgment. And Allah will remember us in the hereafter. And Allah will say to us, O oh, my servant, you on the face of the earth, you remembered me. Today I shall remember you. And I will grant you paradise. Jannatul Firdaus. And that is our goal. And that is our aim. Because to die, we have to die. But the question is, what is next? And that is, should be a concern that we have in our, eye, in our hearts. So as Muslims, let us take the lessons that we are learning in Ramadan. Keep it with us. And especially... Try our best to remember Allah more and more and more and more because the remembrance of Allah, it brings light to the heart. When light comes in the heart, it illuminates the heart. Iman increases, taqwa increases, piety increases, tawakkul increases, and those are the things that we need as Muslims to carry us along while we live on the face of the earth. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless each and every one of us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala choose us from among the sincere and true Muslims. May he make our lives on the face of the earth easy. And may he make our lives in the hereafter also an easy one. Wal-akhir da'wana and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. His face so beautiful bestowed with grace.